Greetings, Classical Lights. We have a special treat for you. We have the Reverend Sean Amos with us today. And uh, he's going to be talking about his shows that he's playing in New York City, starting off at Rockwood 2 tonight. And um, welcome. Thank you, man. Thank you. And uh, so let's jump right into it. So Rockwood, <laughs> Rockwood 2. <laughs> yeah, we were there and um, we were there late last year when the album came out. The album came out in October. Yeah. yeah I think it was one of the first gigs we played was uh -huh. at Rockwood. Great. And uh, it was a blast. You know, people were appreciative. And it's a real like music listeners, mm -hmm. I mean, the room sounds great, and people listen, and yeah. it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's nice, it's a mm -hmm. nice, really nice place to be. Well, it's one of those great locations, too, down the Lower East Side, where all these music lovers, I think, kind yeah. of coalesce and come together. It's pretty vibrant. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of art culture down there, a lot of music culture. You get to see, I've seen everything in Rockford, some jazz, hip-hop, yeah. blues, and now you'll be a blues artist there, too. Cool. Among the ranks, among the echelons. <laughs> but you'll, so you're going to be supporting um, the Reverend Sean Amos loves you. I've been on this blues journey for, I guess it's really 2012, mm -hmm. 20, late 2012, um, but it's kind of, you know, I, I've always been into American music. You know? mm -hmm. I did a bunch of records in the sort of early 2000s, which were Americana, pretty, pretty straight Americana mm -hmm. records. Yeah, it's very folk tinged to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe a, a bit more eclectic than the typical Americana record, but rooted in Americana, and then I, did a record in, in 2003, which was really the last record I'd made until this whole trip. Mm -hmm. And that was a little more eclectic in terms of bars from a lot of different American genres. But all, you know, I've always been just pretty dedicated to American music. Yeah, I mean, especially listening to uh, your most recent album. I mean, you have a lot of conviction when you sing. It sounds like you've been doing this forever. You were born to do this. <laughs> I think I found my voice. Yeah. yeah. So do you think that it's like cathartic, uh, oh, singing God. the blues and everything? Hell yeah. It's amazing music in that it, it's certainly yes it's born out of suffering it's born out of you know great pain and hardship mm -hmm. but it's also like it, 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 it speaks to just you know the resilience of the human spirit you know? I think so, so too. ultimately it, it, to me it, it's a very triumphant music mm -hmm. not a downer music mm -hmm. and, and, and the name of it is almost like what it has working against it the most <laughs> yeah, yeah right. it's absolutely yeah, it's like, yeah. it's like if, I were, if you were to do like a brand makeover it's like how can you call it something else other yeah, than yeah. that because it makes it sound like it's a downer mm -hmm. but it's not down at all man. And to me it, it's, it's really joyful and truly celebratory because it, it, it shows that uh you know we all can overcome and that we all are really connected by these very base things mm -hmm. you know, we all want to you know, do right by ourselves and do right for people in our lives and want to be more and want to be the oldest. And it's all pretty basic stuff. Mm -hmm. You play, you know, classical music for a bunch of, you know, twenty year olds yeah. and I'm not gonna get it. You know, but blues seems to work like across the board. Yeah, of course. Everybody. That's yeah. pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. not, not many genres do that. Yeah, well I mean also when you think about like the British invasion when they came over and they appropriated that blues sound and people like the Rolling Stones and yeah. stuff like that, they uh, especially where they, they coined their name after, you know, Muddy Waters. Muddy Waters. Well yeah, they, 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 in the main respects they they sort of gave us our history back, you know. Yeah. And, and, but the Europeans are good at that. I mean, I, they, they, you know, we discard all this stuff and then they sort of like look through the garbage bins and go, why'd they throw this away? <laughs> this is cool. Why yeah. do they, they toss this? I'll keep that. Yeah. I'll keep that. And then they sort of throw it back at us and then, you know, we have to sort of buy it back again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think music, a lot of music, especially right now, is in kind of a revival period. I feel like a lot of music's already been done. Pretty much the book has been written, I feel like, in all, almost all respects. And now uh, kids, especially, uh, are kind of revisiting like 80 sounds or yeah. in the sense you're revisiting a, an older sound. I think it's part of it. I mean, there's definitely a lot of revisiting of like older sounds, mm -hmm. and, and whether the older 80s or before. But also, there's a cool, like, I think it's also, a, to me, I like it and also like what goes on in like the whole artisanal scene. Mm -hmm. If you look at like, you know, just like artisanal coffee shops or, li or like these, you know, this sort of back to basics kind of movement. I think it's also a response to just, you know, there's so much technology in our lives and things are moving so fast. I don't think one is prepared to have that go away. I think mm -hmm. people dig it by and large. I think yeah. people are kind of romantic about stuff that mm -hmm. is simpler and things are made of hand. Yeah. So if you look at like, you know, Nathaniel Rayliff or, you know, the sufferers will be on bridges or Sharon Jones, the Dab Kings. Yeah. There, there's a whole sort of, uh, even Alabama shakes. Oh yeah, and they just uh, they just won. Yes. Yeah, they just won a Grammy. It's good for all of us. Uh -huh. Congratulations. Absolutely, yeah, congrats. But speaking um, to the, we were talking about you know the human experience or you know the blues kind of speaking about yourself and this kind of mental state. Um, you've had a firsthand experience with mental disease in your family, and you're an advocate of you know research and mental health and 
all that, and you sit on the board of the of the Dee Dee Hirsch Foundation. I do. I, well, you know, my mom suffers from mental. My mom was a nightclub singer uh, mm -hmm. here in New York, and, she actually, and that's what uh, helped inspired you. Yeah, I mean, in part, yeah, I mean, I, it's funny. I, I, my dad was an agent, William Morris, and my mom was a singer, and they met here in New York in the '60s, yep. sort of doing a thing. And then she uh, suffered mental illness, a disease called schizoaffective disorder, which is sort of a mix of schizophrenia and bipolar. So it's a pretty bad situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and she ultimately took her life in 2003. And I grew up, you know, around, you know, my parents were divorced, and so I grew up alone with her, so I grew up in this mentally ill household mm -hmm. at a time when no one really talked about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And still, too few people talk about it. But yeah. back then, you know, no one really talked about that stuff. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, yeah, so yeah. There was a big stigma on that stuff. And so when she died, uh, I made a record that sort of that was in part a tribute to her and part me just trying to grieve and deal with my own. Of course, yeah, and that was kind of your seminal record too. Yeah, yeah. I'm proud of it. Thank you, Shirley. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it sort of got, you know, it got a lot of traction. Mm -hmm. Oh.